Dr. Mark, thank you for joining us this morning here at the 21st Annual CFRI Education Conference. And if you would kindly introduce yourself to our online audience who cannot be present with us. Sure. Uh, my name is John Mark. I'm a pediatric lung doctor, pulmonary doctor at Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford. I've been there for the last three years. Before that, I was uh, six years down at the University of Arizona, where I spent two years doing a fellowship with Andrew Weil, who was the person who uh, is interested in integrated therapies, mostly complementary alternative medicine. And I did that uh, two years of uh, research with him, actually looking to see which types of alternative therapies actually may help children and adults who have lung disease. Thank you. Um, your presentation at the conference this weekend, complementary and alternative medicines, um, I have a couple of questions I would like to ask you regarding that. First, what complementary and alternative medicine is most effective, in your opinion, for CF patients? Yeah, I always like that question because it's like, what antibody works best for an infection? It's like, name one. I mean, complementary alternative medicine is, is a whole series of different types of, of approaches, and you could say it could be dietary supplements, it could be lifestyle changes, it could be exercise, it could be uh, energy medicine, it could be Chinese medicine with acupuncture. There's just not one one thing, it's just too broad a category. It's a whole different approach to actually looking at it. So actually I don't really call it complementary alternative medicine so much as I do integrative medicine where you actually try to take what you do every day, which is a lot of people is a tremendous amount of therapies, and then you try to make your lifestyle more healthy. And that could be adding one or two different dietary supplements, it could be doing the meditation, it could be getting on a treadmill, all these different things. So it's very individualistic. So there's not one thing. If there was, it would be easy. We could just give that to everybody and it would be uh, very simple. But it's not. It's complicated like everything else. It depends on who you are and what your lung status is and who your family is and where you live, what your mind is like and what you want to uh, do with your, uh, with your health. And how would you broach that topic with your CF specialist? So since I am the CF specialist, mm -hmm. I would talk to my patients and families about what they're interested in. Are they interested in taking more pills? Well, a lot of people aren't. Are they interested in looking into a different alternative health care system like Ayurvedic or Chinese medicine? Then we would discuss those things. And then we would want to say, do you want to do a little bit of Chinese medicine with a little bit of dietary supplements with whatever you, lifestyle changes such as exercise? It, it all depends on kind of what they're interested in. Just because, as you know, with everybody, with all the things that, that people have to take and, and patients and families have to deal with, is that the most important thing is adherence. And so we really want to have a buy-in and have something, you know, I'm not going to have a three-year-old try and do acupuncture if they hate needles. So, you know, it has to do with what, what you really want to do. For some people, it's just eating healthy and doing exercise. That doesn't sound like that should be very alternative, but for, you almost never hear about that prescribed by your healthcare physician in the CF Center. But actually, that may be as important as doing your chest physiotherapy and taking inhaled antibiotics. Thank you. What resources are available regarding alternative medicines? Well, that's the problem. There's so many resources that are available, but which ones can you trust? And, and uh, if, if you go to your, your uh, CF center, a lot of times the physicians especially, but even the nutritionists and other people, don't have a lot of background in this area. So then what do you do? Then you do anecdotal things where you talk to friends, you talk to family, you talk to other patients. And that really works out well as to what worked for that. But the other thing that people go to is like go to the internet or the websites. And then again, you have to be a little bit careful because some people are mostly in there to try to sell you things and some people are in there to try to help you with your health. And so how do you weigh that and how do you try to sort that out? And that's what I try to do with patients and families. So I, what I try and tell every CF center is they should have at least one person who is somebody that can help patients try to sort out what kind of modalities and therapies that they're interested in and then try to find out what is the most effective, what's safe, and what doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Okay, thank you. And are, and are um, some of those methods or therapies widely accepted in the CF medical community? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, again, especially things like nutrition and exercise. You know, it's almost in some of the mind-body therapies like meditation and imagery and some of stress management. Those are all things that people talk about all the time. How about uh, it, some places like Boston Children's, you could get an acupuncture uh, treatment and a massage, and that's part of the standard therapy if you get hospitalized there. So some places have really embraced it. Other places haven't quite done uh, the same amount. But almost everyone is starting to come around realizing that to treat the patient and the person, you have to treat them as a whole person, not just one aspect. Thank you. And lastly, what cautions do you have for patients who wish to pursue other methods of treatments? Well, I think the most important thing is that you have to be up front with your health care givers to make sure that they know what you're taking because there's some things 
that actually may be dangerous. And, and there's some things that actually could have significant side effects. And sometimes they may even uh, overlap with what you're already doing. So do you really need to be on this supplement if you're already getting it in a t another type of a medication? So I think that has to mostly do with safety and effectiveness. So you have to be careful and also you have to worry about the cost. We did a study at the University of Arizona. We, we actually averaged saving patients around $400 a month by going through and just decreasing some of the supplements that they were taking that had really the same amount of, of, uh, of uh, efficacy. Thank you so much, You're Dr. Welcome. Mark. Really appreciate that.